there, this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. In today's tutorial, we're going to make a Tunisian simple stitch dishcloth. Tunisian simple stitch dishcloth. Say that three times fast, that is definitely a tongue twister. Tunisian crocheting can be described as a sort of mix between knitting and crocheting. Each row of Tunisian crochet consists of a first pass and a second pass, and I will go over exactly how to do this in the tutorial. This is a great project if you want to dabble into the world of Tunisian crochet but don't know exactly where to start. In this video, you will learn how to complete the Tunisian simple stitch with an end result in a cute nude dishcloth. To get started, you'll need a ball of your favorite medium weight cotton yarn and a 5mm Tunisian crochet hook. For a complete list of materials and the link back to my blog post with more information about this project, please see the description box below. Please be sure to visit the blog post for the written pattern. This video is simply a visual aid to help guide you through the written pattern. I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you are notified whenever I post a new video so that you can stay in the loop for all my latest tutorials. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't seen one before, this is a Tunisian crochet hook. It looks like a hybrid between a knitting needle and a crochet hook. You'll see that there is a crochet hook tip at the far end and then a stopper end like you would see on a knitting needle. So grab your favorite color of cotton yarn and make a slip knot as you normally would to start any other crochet project and you're then going to chain 30. So you want to remember that Tunisian crochet typically tends to run very tight, and I am a pretty tight stitch crocheter as it is. So your starting foundation, you're going to wanna to make sure that you do a looser chain than what you normally would. And as a reminder, to chain, you will yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. And if you're having a difficult time chaining loosely, really emphasize on pulling down your chain as you pull through your yarn over, um, as you pull the yarn over through the loop on your hook. That helps me make a more loose and consistent chain. So if you would, go ahead and complete your chain 30. All right, so you should have 30 chains. Each row of Tunisian Simple Stitch, you will complete a first pass and a second pass. For the first pass, we're going to be inserting our hook into each chain and drawing up a loop. This part two, the second pass, we will be completing the stitch. To begin, we are going to work into the second crochet chain from our hook. And we're not going to be going into the front of the chain as we normally would. Um, for this project, I want to go into the back bar. So this is what the front of a crochet chain looks like. And if you flip it over, you will see there is a little bar in the back of each chain. That is where we're going to be working each stitch for the first row of our foundation chain. So to begin, we're going to go into that second chain from our hook and we're going to draw up a loop. So go ahead and get yourself oriented with the back bar of your chain. Insert your hook into that second little bar. Yarn over and draw up that loop. As you're drawing up your loops, you really want to be mindful that you're doing these evenly and quite loosely. As I mentioned before, the Tunisian stitch tends to run quite tight. I like to hold my pointer finger on top of the stitches to stabilize them as I draw up the new loops so that that way when I do my yarn over, I'm not pulling the loops that are already on my hook too tightly. As you can see, my loops have a good amount of give around my crochet hook. We're now going to go into that next chain, insert our hook, yarn over, and draw up the loop onto our hook. So once again, 
insert your hook into that back bar. You're going to yarn over and draw up the loop. And you can check yourself by sliding your stitches across your needle and if they can go freely and look consistent and um, look like they have a consistent and even tension, you're doing great. If you notice that your stitches are starting to get tight, just pull them out and you can start over. I suggest that you pause here and meet back up with me once you have drawn through a loop through each chain, each of your foundation chains. Okay, so we're approaching our last couple chains. Insert your hook into that back bar, yarn over, draw up a loop. And then the next one is a little bit difficult to see. Um, you can kind of twist your foundation chain around just so you can kind of see where you're, where you're going. But um, insert your hook into that last back bar and draw up your last loop. So you have just completed row one, pass one of simple stitch, um, Tunisian, of Tunisian simple stitch. Now we're ready to do the second pass of our first row. And this is what it should look like. To begin our second pass, we're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop on our hook. And then we're going to yarn over again and draw through two loops. Yarn over, draw through two loops. So you're going to repeat that across the entire row. And once again, I want to remind you that you're going to want to be mindful of making sure that you're producing loose yet even tension in each of your stitches. What helps me do this is um, with my right hand, I hold the very end, basically where the end, the little stopper is on the crochet hook, I hold that end in my right hand. And then when I do my yarn over and pull through the two loops, I actually pull my worked stitches down. So I'll show you again. So yarn over and pull down on your stitches, down on your worked stitches, as you pull your loop through the two loops on your hook. And this is what your stitches look like. So yarn over and pull down on your worked stitches to slide the two loops off of your hook. Using this technique, I find that I get a nice, loose, and even tension, which is exactly what you're looking for. Once again, if you'd like, I suggest that you go ahead and pause here and then meet back up with me once you have drawn through all the loops on your hook and you're ready to start row two. All right, I am just finishing up the last couple of stitches of row one. And now we're ready to begin the first pass of row two. And this is what your first row should look like. You'll begin by inserting your hook into the front bar of each stitch. So 
So go ahead and insert your hook into that front little bar and you will yarn over and then draw up a loop. And you'll repeat this across the entire row. So go into that next stitch yarn over and draw up a loop and just like we did for row one you want to be mindful that you're creating loose and even stitches so it helps to hold your pointer finger over your drawn up loops as you yarn over for your new loop and that helps so that you don't pull your new loop too tight causing the rest of your stitches on your hook to be too tight So you'll keep repeating this process across the entire row. All right, so we're just drawing up our last few loops. And our last one will actually go into the chain of our first row. So I'll show you. Um, so this one, draw through up, draw up your loop, draw up your loop. And then this very last one, it's a little bit difficult to see. You might need to turn your work just a little bit so you can see, but go through that little chain. So that is actually, if you remember from our previous row, we just drew through one loop to start the second pass. That is the little chain that we're doing our last stitch in. So now all of our stitches have drawn up loops through them and we're ready to complete um, row two second pass. So once again, you'll yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. And you're going to keep repeating the process of yarning over and pulling through two loops until you get to the end of the row. And like I mentioned in the previous row, I like to hold my hand at the base of the Tunisian hook and use my left hand to pull down on the worked stitches as I pull through the two loops on my hook. That helps me to create a more even and loose tension. So if you would, go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you have completed pulling through all the loops on your hook. All right, so we're just approaching our last few stitches on our hook um, and we're finishing up row two. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook and you have just completed row two. We're now ready to get started on the first pass of row three. And to do row three, we are just going to keep repeating the process that we did for row two. So you're going to insert your hook into that front little bar. Insert your hook, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Insert your hook yarn over, draw up a loop. 
And once again, we're just going to keep doing this across the entire row. So go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you have drawn through a loop through each, um, each stitch on your hook. And just in case you need it, I'm going to show you the last few stitches um, of pass one, row three, um, mostly to show you the last stitch that you draw your loop up through. So yarn over, pull through your loop on that bar, and then that last stitch is going to go into that chain one um, from the previous row. So you're kind of really just going into the side of that stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So now you've completed row three, first pass, and now we're going to complete the second pass of row three. Once again, you're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook. And we're doing the same thing. You're going to yarn over, pull through the next two loops, yarn over, pull through the next two loops, all the way across until you've done this for all the loops on your hook. Once again, go ahead and pause here and meet me back once you've completed row three. Alright, so we're just finishing up row three and you're going to want to just keep repeating what we have been doing until your finished piece measures about seven and a half inches or the width of your dishcloth. Now please note your dishcloth will begin to will most likely begin to curl, especially if this is your first time doing the Tunisian stitch, just because it does tend to run so tight. But don't worry if it curls, mine did too. Um, at the end, you will want to block your dishcloth, wet block your dishcloth, so that that way um, wet blocking will definitely help to solve that problem for you. So go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once your dishcloth has reached the desired length. Okay, at this point our dishcloth should be our desired length and now I am going to show you how to fasten off. So you're going to start by inserting your hook into that front bar, yarn over, draw through your loop, and then complete a slip stitch. So insert your hook into that bar, yarn over, draw up a loop, and then slip stitch. Insert your hook into that front bar, yarn over, draw up a loop, and slip stitch. You're going to repeat this process across the entire row. Okay, and so now we're at the last few stitches of our fasten off row. Yarn over, draw up a loop, slip stitch. Insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, slip stitch. And just like we did for the other rows, you're going to go in, that last stitch is going to go into that chain one. From the previous row, you'll draw up your loop and then complete a slip stitch. All right, so now at this point we are done crocheting our Tunisian dishcloth. You can go ahead and cut your tail, leaving about a six inch tail, so that way you have enough to weave in, and then just pull it through the loop on your hook and pull tight to secure. 
At this point, if your dishcloth is really curled or even if it's slightly curled and you just want it to lie flatter, either way, I suggest that you take the time to go ahead and wet block it and then meet back up with me when you're ready to weave in your ends. All right, so at this point I have wet blocked my dishcloth and it is completely dried. If you have some questions about wet blocking or aren't quite sure exactly what that is, see the post on my blog that I have linked down into the description box below where I talk more about how to go about wet blocking this project. So to start weaving in your ends, you're going to want to take one of your tails and thread it through your yarn needle. And basically just start threading your needle through your work and weave in your ends as inconspicuously as possible. So just kind of go into the back of your work into random stitches that are nearby your tail. And I like to do a few runs or a few passes back and forth um, on a few that span across a few rows of the work. So just insert your needle into a short row of your stitches and this doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to catch each st each stitch exactly you can kind of catch just some of the fibers on each stitch and actually that helps to secure your ends even more um, if you're kind of messy about it so once you go one way then turn your work around and go back the other way but taking care not to go back into the exact stitch that you just came out of. After weaving in your tail um, back and forth a couple of passes and you feel that it's sufficiently weaved in you can go ahead and snip that tail. Repeat this process for each of your remaining tails. Okay, so at this point, your all of your ends should be weaved into your work and you have completed your dishcloth. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you did, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you stay in the loop for all my latest tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye!